Hello, very good morning to one and all. Today we can take a class on Indus Valley Civilization or Harappan Civilization, which was the second module as per our syllabus. Harappan Civilization, otherwise called the Indus Valley Civilization, was the earliest civilization in India. So, first of all, we have to uh, take into consideration what is the difference between a civilization and a culture. Uh, civilization means an advanced stage of culture in which there would be development of science and technology. Culture is something related to the activities of the people, related to the uh, developments of um, art, uh, culture, uh, architecture, uh, music, uh, etiquette, customs, manners, etc. But uh, uh, civilization is an advanced stage of culture. That is the difference between culture and civilization. In Indus Valley, we could find out uh, civilizational aspects rather than the cultural aspects. Uh, Indus Valley civilization was also known as Indus civilization and as well as Harappan civilization. So, it's, it is very necessary, first of all, to find out what is the difference between Indus Valley civilization, Indus civilization and as well as Harappan civilization. Uh, in the beginning, historians began to give the name Indus civilization. Later, they, ha they have started using the term Harappan civilization. Still later, with the development of the discovery of a large number of sites of Indus Valley, uh, it has been known widely as Indus Valley civilization. Because Indus civilization, this civilization existed not on the banks of river Indus alone, but also its tributaries. For example, the largest number of sites of Indus Valley Civilization can be found uh, on the banks of river Hagar, Gagar Hakra. Uh, it is flowing through Rajasthan. Uh, in the earlier period, it was of course generally considered as the mythical Saraswati River. So, we are using the term widely as Indus Valley Civilization. Then, uh, another question is uh, why it is called as the Harappan Civilization. It is known as Harappan civilization because Harappa was the first site of the Indus Valley which has been excavated by the archaeologists. In archaeology there, there is of course an unwritten law by which whenever the archaeologists conduct some excavations of a particular uh, civilization, the whole civilization will be known after the name of the first site which has been discovered by the, excavated by the archaeologists. That is the reason why Indus Valley Civilization was also known as Harappan Civilization. So, as I already pointed out, uh, it was the earliest civilization in India, even though uh, we do not have such kind of idea about such a civilization till the first quarter of the uh, 20th century. It was only after 1920s that extensive excavations has been conducted by the archaeologists of the Archaeological Survey of India. Uh, which has been set up by Lord Carson, the Viceroy of India. Uh, uh, they have conducted excavations. So, uh, the ruins of Harappa was first uh, excavated uh, by Charles Marson, an archaeologist, in the year 1842. Later, Alexander Cunningham, who has been known as the father of Indian archaeology, he has, of course, uh, excavated some of the uh, sites and as well as he was the first person who, of course, found out a Harappan seal in their 1853. Uh, then, extensive excavations were conducted by other archaeologists in India as well as in the present-day Pakistan, which was a part of India before the uh, division of the country in Indian Pakistan. Uh, and Sir John Marshall, who was the Director General of Archaeological Survey of India during that time, he was of course the person who has made pioneering effort in the archaeological excavations of this Indus Valley Civilization. And um, uh, after the excavations, uh, this John Marshall, he has of course uh, was the person who firstly officially announced about the found findings of the Indus Valley Civilization when he has of course given uh, an exclusive interview to, uh, a, to a newsletter called Illustrated uh, London News uh, while he has made this announcement uh, in England in 1924. 
and that is why he has of course generally pointed out that we have to push back the story of the civilization of india to further backwards and the history of india starts not with the arrival of the aryans or the vedic period but uh, there was of course a wonderful civilization that existed on the banks of river indus and its tributaries that is where the indus civilization has been excavated and in the beginning uh, there was of course a historical puzzle that existed among the scholars and and archaeologists that why uh, we could find out a civilization appearance of a civilization uh, this in the pages of history all on a sudden but Uh, through the extensive excavations which has been conducted by the archaeologists during the post partition period uh, especially the excavations made by two french archaeologists jean franguis jerig and richard meadow that has brought they have brought to light the ev- evidence of the pre harappan civilizations that existed in places like amri kodji and kalibengan and they successfully pictureized the stage being set for the indus valley mature indus valley civilization from the backdrop of the uh, neolithic uh, civilization neolithic culture and progress of farming communities then uh, uh, advancement of settled agriculture and the industrial uh, starting in the starting of industries and all these things and this was of course a slow and a steady progress through which this civilization has of course appeared and this puzzle could be very easily solved through the uh, excavations conducted by the archaeologists indus or harappan civilization generally arose in the northwestern part of indian subcontinent and the largest number of indus sites was found on the banks of river gagarhakra or the mythical saraswati river the indus civilization was of course little bit older than the charcoalic civilization but generally we are of course um, uh, giving the name indus civilization as a charcoalic civilization because this was a civilization that existed during the time in which the people began to use both copper as well as stone uh, a period in which the people used both copper tools and as well as stone tools was generally known as chalcolithic civilization chalcolithic period the mature harappan civilization that developed in sindh and in punjab the harappan culture uh, which covered the parts of punjab Hi- uh, haryana sindh balochistan gujarat rajasthan and fringes of uttar pradesh and uh, we can conveniently divide the harappan civilization into three important uh, this harappan sites into three important uh, three categories of sites and there were pre harappan sites there were harappan sites or mature harappan sites and there were of course post harappan sites pre harappan sites are the sites which which developed during before the uh, promulgation of the actual indus civilization and harappan sites uh, the harappan sites or mature harappan sites are the major sites which which happened which occurred uh, or developed during the mature period of the harappan civilization and the post harappan sites uh, existed after the decay of the harappan uh, culture or civilization and pre harappan sites included amri kodji kalibangan rangpur benawali mehgar etc so we can take into account some of the major harappan sites and its significance because it is very important in the examination point of view firstly harappa and mohenjodaro were the twin capitals of this in december harappa which was firstly excavated by uh, alexander kanniham in 1872 73 but the extensive excavations in this site has been made by a person an archaeologist called uh, rai bahadur dayaram sahni in 1920 harappa is the biggest city in the is in december and it is it was located in the mandagomari district in punjab now it is located in pakistan harappa is comparatively larger in extent than mohenjodar harappa is situated on the banks of river revi in punjab the most remarkable building in harappa was a great granary and this granary was of course used by the people of indus valley people to for the storage of the grains and other food materials 
in the citadel there were six granaries in harappa and another important discovery which was found in harappa was the workmen's quarters and from harappa we could find out 891 seals and seals were of course some type of material which has been made mainly out of steatite and it was used by the indus valley people as a mark of their property it was on the seals that we could find out so many scripts and other pictorial objects and from which we could of course find out the indus valley scripts uh, and harappa is the only place where there are of course traces of coffin burial system as found so there were different types of burial system that existed in indus valley empire indus valley you know, during the indus valley period and coffin burial was on on the particular type of burial system uh, and coupled burial system was there and burial after cremation was there and different types of burial system was there and uh, next important site was mohenjadar it was uh, discovered for the first time uh, by r b banerji rahul das banerji of course an archaeologist of the archaeological survey of india in 1922 and mohenjadaro is says which was which is situated about about 300 miles north of karachi in sindh now in pakistan it is in larkana district in sindh and mohenjadaro literally means mount of the dead and it was a sindhi word mohenjadaro is a sindhi word which means mount of the dead because during the time of the excavations the huddle the remains of some of the skeletal remains of the Uh, that bodies has been of course found uh, in mohenjadaro and that is why the archaeologists use the term mohenjadaro meaning bound of the dead and it lies in the right banks of river indus and im- an important excavation that we could find out in mohenjadaro was assembly hall or of course a municipal hall which was of evidence of such a kind of hall was found at mohenjadaro and um, another notable discovery uh, of uh, in the, this mohenjadaro was of course the great bath or sacred bath the indus valley people used this great bath or sacred bath for uh, sacred purposes and uh, another important uh, notable excavation we could find out was, uh, was of course the uh, this uh, uh, figure of a bearded man in steatite and uh, a dancing girl in bronze and uh, One thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight seals were found from Mohenjo-daro alone, and it was from Mohenjo-daro that uh, the archaeologists could find out uh, a piece of woven cotton cloth, and we, from this we could finalize that the Indus Valley people were the earliest set of people who used the cotton in the world. and there were so many other evidences uh, regarding the uh, use of cotton by the indus valley people uh, and uh, in the mesopotamian records there was a word by name sindon that was of course the word used by the mesopotamian people for referring the indus valley cotton there was a brisk trade between mesopotamia and indus valley and they used the word sindon for mentioning uh, this cotton used by the indus valley people and first street was of course a street um, which was found from mohenjadaro that is of course a notable street of the indus valley empire and we could generally see that uh, mohenjadaro and harappa were the twin capitals of the indus empire and tholwara was another important notable place it was located at kutch district in gujarat and it was firstly discovered uh, by j p joshi in the year 1967-68 and it uh, this excavation has brought to light the sophisticated urban planning and ar- architecture and they have unearthed a number of antiquities such as seals beads animal bones gold silver terracotta ornaments and metals in the mesopotamia so one of the most important evidence that we could find out about the indus valley civilization was the uh, the, the evidences which we could collect from the mesopotamian records apart from the relics which has been found out from various places of indus sites of indus valley civilization mesopotamian records contribute as an important source of information for the uh, for the discovery of indus valley civilization and tholwara is the latest and one of the two largest harappan settlements in india and lothal was another important and notable place it was located in gujarat and it was discovered in the in in their 1954 and 
Lothal provides the largest collection of antiquities in the archaeologists of modern India. It was excavated by S. R. Rao in 1957. Rice husks, evidence of rice husks was found from Lothal. The famous dockyard was found from Lothal. That was of course a notable discovery. Then evidences of beat makers shops was there because beat making was one of the most important industry of the Indus Valley people. And it was only in Lothal that the um, houses opened to their main street. And in all other places, the main door of the houses were in the backs, back places. But it was in only in Lothal, uh, another, this, this uh, uh, doors opening towards the street uh, that we could find out. Evidence of coupled burial system was found from Lothal and fire pits were also found from Lothal. And Sutkagandor was another important notable site of the Indus Valley Empire and it was uh, discovered, excavated by Aurelstein in 1927. A number of ports were found from this uh, Sutkagandor. Roper was another important notable place in the Indus Empire. And uh, uh, the importance of uh, Roper was that there were so many findings from this site that uh, pottery, ornaments, copper axes, chert blades, terracotta blades, uh, then street IT seals, typical Indus uh, pictographic uh, representations, burial, uh, different types of burials, and rectangular mud brick chamber, etc., has been found from this place, Roper. And there is an evidence of burying a dog along with a human burial in Roper. That suggested that the Indus Valley people had a belief in life after death. That is why they buried the dog of the master along with. Uh, this uh, burial, human burial. Ropper is situated in Punjab. It is on the banks of river Satlej and it was firstly excavated by uh, Y.D. Sharma in 1950. And Kalibengan was another notable place and it means black bangles. From Kalibengan we could find out a large number of uh, these bangles and the people manufactured bangles from this place and it lay on northern Rajasthan on the banks of river Gagarhakra and evidence of bangles, apart from the evidence of bangles, ornamental bricks were also uh, found out uh, from this place. Uh, and uh, uh, Chanhudara was another important uh, place of the Indus Valley Civilization, site of the Indus Valley Civilization. And some of the remarkable um, findings from Chanakudara include bronze figure of a bullock cart, uh, then Ingwell footprints uh, of uh, an elephant and a dog chasing a cat, etc. has been found. Some of the other notable sites include Alamjirpur, Amri, Balakot, Alhdino, uh, Alamjir, then Deshalpur, uh, Rangpur, Ali Murad, etc. has been of course found from the Indus Valley uh, sites. These are the Indus Valley major important Indus Valley sites. Uh, and another important notable feature of the Indus Valley civilization was the, the town planning of the Indus Valley people. So that was the most notable contributions of the Indus Valley people to history. In Indus Valley, the towns followed a grid system. The roads generally cut at right angles. The town was ended from the east street and the junction of the town was known as Oxford Cyrus. Some of the important cities were divided into two parts. The fortified settlements on the higher mounds were designed, designated as the citadels, and the main residential areas of the, uh, uh, to the west were generally called as the lower towns. It was on the citadel complexes that the higher higher ups in the society lived, whereas uh, in the lower towns, the common people generally dwelled. There were lamp posts at uh, intervals to indicate the existence of street lighting. And uh, the first street was found in Mohanjadaro. The standard material for the construction of the houses and as well as layout of the cities were of course mainly the bricks, more particularly burned bricks. And uh, bricks were made, usually made out of the alluvial soil. Ornamental uh, bricks were used in Kalibengan. And there was a great granary which was found in Harappa. Yeah. And in great granary itself, there were six small granaries for pounding the grain. Each house had bathrooms with the systems covered with drains connected to the main drain of the street. 
and there were multi storied buildings there were of course provisions for uh, this uh, kitchen uh, and other utensils and all these things were there in each and every houses in in this valley people uh, in this valley civilization great bath was found bath was found in mohenjadaro and the actual bathing pool of the great bath uh, which measures 39 feet long 23 feet wide and 8 feet deep this building resembles a large swimming pool water from adjacent well was used to fill the pool with the fresh water and the used water was drained out through an outlet to the corner and great bath was probably used during the religious ceremonies and there were small bathrooms as uh, baths, baths which is very adjacent to the great bath which has been of course generally used for the children and elaborate ar arrangements were made for the uh, this cleaning of the clothes uh, changing the clothes and all these things were there uh, and we could find out that even during in 1922 23 onwards this ex extensive excavations has been conducted from this for from the great bath and all these areas and uh, the wonder that we could find was that it has successfully withstood the ravages of thousands of years such a kind of uh, manufacturing technique uh, construction techniques and technologies has been used by the indus valley people and assembly hall was another important notable findings which we could find out mohenjodar and the largest number of structure was found from mohenjodaro rather than from other places and a large tank was found at tholvira which is compared to the great bath of mohenjodaro and and there was of course some other uh, findings from other indus valley sites uh, uh, and these all uh, shows that the people had a civic sense and they had of course they valued the life and they were of course very much concerned about the standardization and a uniform standard measurement measured bricks were used for for the constructions l shaped bricks were used for the construction of the corners of the houses uh, and uh, different types of materials were as been of course used by the people for the construction of roads and other cities lamp posts were there then there were provision uh, uh, for uh, displacing the dirt uh, uh in the on the sides of the roads and and the corners are be has been rounded off by using the um uh, this uh, bricks and generally they have used the people have used the bullock carts with the pack socks and for the travel uh, and uh, elaborate provisions has been made uh, for the uh, convenience of the people and city planning was another marvel of the indus valley civilization then with regard to the economy of the indus valley civilization we could find out that indus valley civilization flourished on the fertile plains of river indus and its tributaries the most important the uh, occupation of the people of indus valley and uh, they were of course always engaged with uh, some other arts and crafts trade seal making uh, bead making etc the indus valley people produced a significant quantities of cotton a good quality barley has been discovered from a place called benavali rice husks were discovered from lothal and rangpur and the principal products of the harappan and mohenjodaro people were wheat and barley and the major products of kalibangan was barley major products of lothal rangpur so kotada were rice and millets and indus people produced the peas sesame and mustard so many animals were domesticated by the people which include bull buffalo sheep elephant pig dog and camel bead maker shops were found at chankudara and lothal kalibangan balakot lothal and chankudara were centers of shell making and bangle making and weights and measures of accuracy existed in the harappan civilization major source of the items used by the indus valley people in gold gold has been collected by the people from south india afghanistan and persia silver was collected from afghanistan and iran copper came from south india baluchistan and persia conch shell came from saurashtra and dekkan lapis lazuli was collected from badakhshan turquoise was collected from iran amethyst from maharashtra 
Ajit from Saurashtra and Western India, Jade from Central India as well as from Tibet. In the Swali people had very close commercial contact with Iran, Afghanistan, Mesopotamia, Elam, Krete, etc. So, uh, in the Swali civilization was of course a civilization in which the people has elaborate arrangements of the for of course a subsistence econo economy. And another important uh, uh, area that we have to note down was uh, the script of the Indus Valley people. So one of the most important uh, thing that we have to bear in mind that Indus Valley script has not been deciphered till date, successfully deliberate, uh, deciphered uh, till date. Uh, the writings of Harappans were mainly found in their seals which was used as a mark of their property. The Harappan scripts were very short and brief texts were there. That is, of course, one of the most important difficulty in deciphering the script. If the script is very, very uh, small and loose, it, it is very difficult for the uh, experts to decipher the script. The average number of symbols on the seals is five, and the largest only being 26. The language uh, underneath is unknown. Uh, that is, of course, a most important and satisfactory aspect related to the Indus script. Uh, there were so many attempts which has been made by some of the scholars. And uh, one important uh, person who made an attempt to decipher the Indus script was Wardell. He was, of course, a European scholar who wrote a book called Indus and Sumerian Script uh, Deciphered. According to him, uh, the Sumerians have conquered the Indus Valley area and introduced their script and as well as rule. Dr. Pranad was another important person who supported the theory of Mara. According to him, uh, many ancient scripts were pictographic in nature. Morris J. Spivak was a scholar who found uh, made some attempts to decipher the Indus script. He was an American archaeologist and according to him, Harappan script denotes the Hebrew legends especially the stories of Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark. Sudam Sukhima Ray was of course a person who tried to uh, decipher the script. According to him, Harappan script was archaic Sanskrit script. M.V. and Krishna Rao was another important uh, expert who tried to uh, decipher the script. And according to him, the Harappan script is cl uh, closely related to the Aryan language script. Dr. Fateh Singh, he supported the view of Sudam Sukhima Rai that it was an archaic Sanskrit script. S.K. Parpola uh, cleared that uh, it was of course a Dravidian script. Dr. S.R. Rao, who has made pioneer attempt in this area and he wrote a book called The Decipherment of the Indus Script. According to him, the Indus Script was an Indo-Aryan script with the sprinkling of some of the Iranian words. Dr. Iravadan Mahadevan made some attempts and according to him it was a Dravidian script. There was of course a scholar from uh, Kerala who is no more now. He was K.K. Raman from 11th Tappathanandita who has made some attempts to decipher the Indus script. He wrote a book in Malayalam entitled in which he has claimed that the Indus script was purely a Dravidian script. N.K. Varma and Arun Patak made some attempts. They were two scholars from Bihar and they claimed that Indus script is very similar to the script used by the Sandar tribes of India. So these are some of the attempts which has been made by scholars in the decipherment of Indus script but it has not been successfully decipherated and or there is of course no consensus among the scholars regarding the contents of the Indus script. And with regard to the Harappan religion, you could find out that the Indus Valley people, uh, they have worshipped nature in its various forms. Mother Goddess was the principal divinity of the Indus Valley people. In one figure, a plant is shown growing out of the embryo of a woman and the image probably represents the Goddess of the Earth. And there was of course uh, the figure of a male deity which is represented on a seal and the god has three ho horned heads and is represented in a yogic posture. The god is surrounded by an elephant, a rhinoceros, a tiger and below the throne there is a buffalo and at his feet there were two deers. It is identified as Pashupati Shiva according to John Marshall. 
and then it has been suggested by some of the scholars, especially John Marshall, that and these animals have been, of course, trying to amass the power of their. They have been found looking into the four corners of the earth, amassing the power of the earth, and it has been giving to the to the deity. Uh, and there was no temples has been found constructed in the Indus Valley, even though idolatry has been practiced. The Indus Valley people worshipped trees, especially pipa, and they also worshipped the symbol swastika. Animals were worshipped, and the most important among the, them being one-horned bull or unicorn, which may be identified with the rhinoceros. Three forms of burial system practiced in Indus Valley civilization included. Burial, complete burial, fractional burial, and post cremation burial. And with regard to the polity of the Indus Valley people, there were divergent views among the historians and scholars. And it has been suggested that there was a kingdom that existed in Indus Valley, which has been ruled out by many of the historians. And there was a, another important suggestion was the existence of a municipal type of administration. So there are some uh, satisfactory evidences which we could find out uh, giving credit to this argument that municipal type of administration exists in Mohenjo-daro and Harappa and other places because uh, some kind of municipal arrangements has been made with regard to the planning of the cities, uh, then um, drainage systems, healthcare, these are all there during the Indus Valley civilization. Maybe some kind of, anyway, some decision making authority was there. Without the existence of such a kind of decision making authority, it would not have been possible for the Indus people to build such a kind of magnificent civilization. And uh, there was an important argument that it was, of course, a priest priestly rule, just like that of the Mesopotamian uh, Mesopotamian civilization. There, there would have been a priest king. Some scholars suggested that the evidence of a, a bearded man in state found from Mohenjo-daro was, of course, the evidence of a priest king. Anyway, there was no consensus regarding the existence of a type of administration. Merchants had a, an important role in the society and bead making was the principal industry of the Indus Valley people. Uh, we could conclude that there was of course uh, some type of uh, this governance that existed in the Indus Valley people, Indus Valley civilization. And we could uh, go to the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. There are different theories suggested to the decline of Indus Valley civilization. And uh, Mortimer Wheeler was a uh, pioneer scholar who made an attempt for finding, for, to find out the re probable reasons for the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. He suggested a sudden death theory. According to him, the Aryan invasion was the main reason for the decline of Indus Valley civilization. And according to Mortimer Wheeler, there is a, a similarity between the words like a Harappa of Indus Valley and a Hari Ubaya, a word which has been of course used in the Vedic text as a source of Soma drink. And Harappa and Hari Ubaya are of course some of the words which has been which have some resemblance. Another important suggestion argument was that so many huddled remains of the skeletal remains have been found in the post Harappan uh, civilization from Harappa that is called the cemetery age culture and according to him uh, if these uh, uh, skeletal remains of the post Harappan uh, or, or the uh, cemetery age culture belonged to the Indus Valley people uh, if the Aryan arguments uh, that they worshipped Indra having their uh, this Vajrayuda and other kinds of weapons has been called as the this uh, Purandara or breaker of the forts. The Indus, if the Indus forts were the forts mentioned in the uh, Aryan, this Vedic uh, text, and as well as the scuttled remains of the Indus Valley people were, of course, the this which was found in uh, found in Harappa. There is some uh, clues that the Aryan invasion may lead to the Indus, uh, decline of the Indus Valley civilization. But these uh, arguments have not been supported with some other evidences or many scholars have not uh, corroborated with evidences uh, about this theory. Then Make was another important historian who has suggested that the vagaries of the river Indus was another main reason for the decline of Indus Valley civilization. Because the Indus Valley, uh, Indus River has of course changed the course of its, changed its course in, in, in uh, due course and uh, made the land unfertile and the people were forced to migrate to some other places and that contributed for the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. 
Mackay suggests then another important argument was uh, made by G. F. Dales, who suggest, suggested that natural calamities are caused for the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. W. A. Fair Service, another important scholar, he has of course con considered ecological factors as the decline of Indus Valley civilization and the growing population and the fall of the production led to the decline of Indus Valley civilization, according to him. Another scholar by name Owen Steen and John Marshall suggested that the theory of climatic change as the chief reason for the decline of Indus Valley civilization. And this theory was supported by the archaeologists archaeologist like F.A. Durrani and Kuldeep Singh. A. Ghosh suggested that decline of in, uh, decline of trade, uh, trade relations especially the Mesopotamia was the chief reason for the decline of Indus Valley civilization. Uh, and uh, anyway, the theory of flood was of course considered as, the flood theory has been considered as the uh, most important uh, probable reason for the decline of Indus Valley Civilization. And we had rich legacy from the Indus Valley Civilization. Uh, in our modern Indian Civilization, present day Indian Civilization, Indians, uh, Indians have owed so much to, from the Indus, Indus people and this yeah. Indus Valley Empire. Uh, the use of uh, wheat as the staple diet of the North Indians has been, of course, started for the first time in Indus Valley. Uh, the worship of female divinity in, in our Hindu temples has been suggested as one of the one of the most important uh, uh, legacy of the Indus Valley civilization. The peace-loving people, nature of the people, has been, of course, uh, followed by the Indus Indian people uh, till date. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, sign uh, significant uh, contributions to the Indus people, including the establishment and the construction of large dams, large uh, large uh, citadel complexes, uh, buildings, etc., has been, of course, mm, of course, a wonderful um, experimentation uh, from the part of the Indus people. So we have to owe so much to the Indus Valley people. So thank you all for your uh, patient listening. Thank you. Thank you very much.